What's going on, church? Come on now. What's going on, church? How you doing today? All right, come on, come on. I know in about an hour and 15 minutes, some of y'all are going to be screaming like crazy. <laughs> some of y'all are going to be screaming for them Seahawks, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But to scream for a bunch of players you don't know. If you're wearing a jersey, you have to pay for it. If you go to a game, the game's expensive. Got to pay for parking. I mean, you know, and the one game you do go to is the game they decide not to play well. You know how that works. <laughs> okay. And so all I'm asking, you know, and not really an asking. I mean, it's actually called for in the Bible. It says anytime we come in through his courts, we come in with praise Amen. and with thanksgiving. The reality is I'm not trying to force anybody to praise God. I'm just saying uh, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his saints. So I don't need a lot of y'all. I just need a few of y'all because God's been a little bit too good to me. And so if there's anybody else he's been good to, can you make some noise for the Lord? That's what I'm talking Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I don't want God to be a little passive when he comes to paying attention to my life. <laughs> okay? So here's the thing. We are in the Christmas season. So this series is called Keys to Christmas. So I'm dealing with key number one. So I've been doing this first key today. This is a simple message, not a complicated message. Uh, so I believe you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be simple yet powerful. I like to call myself today. I'm kind of Captain Obvious. <laughs> I don't know how many in here like to learn from aha moments. Anybody like aha moments? You know those moments that make you go, oh. Let me tell you what an aha moment is. It's simply the obvious slapping you upside the head. <laughs> when it's right there for you, you just may have not seen it clear enough. And so we're going to go over that today. But before we do, I want to challenge every one of you to make this holiday season, this Christmas season, the best Christmas season you have ever had. I want it to be special for yourself. But here's the challenge I have for you, the action. I want you this year to make a decision to step outside your comfort zone. They call it random acts of kindness, but I'm talking about when the Holy Spirit moves on your heart to take an action, whatever that action may be. Instead of hesitating and questioning it and letting that moment that you will never get back pass, I'm going to ask you to act because it will not be random. It may be that one act that that person who received the act needed at just the right time. Isn't it interesting that we always say words like somebody needs to do something. But be careful saying that because the Holy Spirit will tap you on the shoulder and call you, you're somebody. And you might be the one that is important act. So I challenge you to do that this year. Get out of your comfort zone. Do some things a little different. I know for myself, I make a decision every year like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless people even more. And, and what I've come to find is I typically just keep blessing the same people. <laughs> I keep doing almost the same thing over and over again, but maybe a little more or, or a little less based on, you know, the convenience factor. Okay? I'm going to ask this year to let that be different for you, okay? Let God show you in that act what he has for you. The scripture does say it is more blessed to give than to receive. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, Christmas today. One other thing that reminded me is Christmas season. And I think this is important for me to uh, um, uh, bring up. I think others may have noticed. Uh, here's how I know it's Christmas season. Because on the TVs in my house, they're all on two channels. Channel 19. See, I heard it. And channel 500. That's the Hallmark channel. And Hallmark's other channel. <laughs> so they just got Christmas movies just going over and over and over again. So the other day, you know, I found myself watching one. 
Now, fellas, you got to understand, you know, I mean, I was just, you know, serving my wife, just trying to lay my life down, <laughs> like the Bible tells me to do. So anyhow, I'm watching this show, <laughs> and I don't know why I didn't change the channel. I just couldn't. I don't know what it did to, I mean, it, it captured me. First of all, it's fascinating that I, I truly believe the same script writer <laughs> wrote the script for every single one of the movies. Everyone, I'm telling you, I can tell you in the first five minutes. You know how it works, you know? If they really want to tug your heart, same script, different slight adjustments. Like, if they really want to grab your heart, that brings somebody coming back from the military. <laughs> somebody got us a dog, something's connected to a dog. Or, you know, the real story, somebody from a big city gets pulled back into a small town. <laughs> That's where my heart really was. <laughs> Like, we can't ha understand Christmas in a big city. <laughs> Anyhow, now I'm making light of it, but I'll be honest. It really made me feel kind of good. <laughs> and I was like, man, this, you know, my daughter tried to change. I was like, change it back. Let me finish. <laughs> okay. But here's what I picked up a little bit from those shows. One particular morning, I changed the channel to the news. And then I took an assessment of how I felt after watching the news for just 15 minutes. I didn't feel as warm, as fuzzy, even though I know how every movie is. It still feels good. <laughs> but one of the things that those movies remind me of is that it really isn't about being busy and being stressed out. Now, now I'm going to spiritualize this. You remember when Martha was busy with Jesus in the room. And as Martha was super busy, she then complained to Jesus why Mary wasn't helping her. Now, y'all, we can be honest. Sometimes when you're busy and you got lazy people sitting around you, and you're like, look at that, what? <laughs> But in that moment, Jesus looks at Martha and says, you got it wrong. Actually sitting at my feet, slowing down, recognizing, appreciating, being in the moment is what matters the most. So I'm going to ask you, not only am I going to ask you to jump out of your comfort zone this year, I'm going to ask every one of you, slow it down. Embrace this season. Let Jesus open up your eyes and show you that he truly is the reason for the season. Now, I'm going to dig deeper into the reason for the season in this message. So we're going to talk about the birth of Jesus. We're going to talk about Jesus being born. So if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn to Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 18 through 23. This is a simple message. A story you have heard many times before. But I think it's very important for me to get you in the right mind frame. There's a lot of stories we hear, and we've heard them so much, that their significance have kind of lost its savor, if that makes sense. It's not as powerful. This impact, if we're not careful, begins to diminish we look at it like it's normal. No, it's miraculous. Do you know the greatest miracle that has ever happened and will ever happen was the birth of Jesus? It is the reason for the sea. If it wasn't for Jesus, we're all in trouble. His move. What God decided to do was so, more importantly, and I get into this, but it completely disrupted the devil's plan. It shocked him. It confused him. He had no answer because he did not anticipate God coming back like this. So let's look at what the scripture says. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 reads, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married 
to Joseph. I need you all to humanize this. I need you to personalize this right now, okay? Don't read this like it's some far off story. Joseph, Mary, they're just like us, okay? Look at the next way he says, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to make sure, do not get all religious and get all nervous. Let's keep it real. If I'm Joseph, I got a problem. If my fiance came to me and told me she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit, <laughs> sometimes we read this book, I'll tell you guys, the book, this Bible's incredible. But you got to realize the significance of what this is. She's pregnant, yet a virgin, impregnated by the Holy Spirit. And here's what Joseph, verse 19, Joseph, her fiance, was a good man, not a bad man, not an evil man, not an angry man, and did not want to disgrace her publicly. I'm telling you, if my fiance shows up pregnant, I'm telling the whole world, that ain't my baby. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Look at verse 20. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord, this is God, appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now, I understand if the angel of the Lord showed up and said, listen, Joseph, don't be angry that your wife or your fiance is pregnant. He said, don't be afraid. Now that, that, that can throw you off a little. Why in the world are you telling them not to be afraid? Look what it says, look at verse 21. It goes, and she will have a son and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from there said, this is, I'm, the first time I thought it, I saw it and it said, do not be afraid. I was like, okay, look, don't fear the opinions of others. Don't fear people judging your family. Don't fear, oh no, this got a lot deeper. He says, no, I need you not to fear because this is bigger than you could ever imagine. What the Holy Spirit has conceived in Mary, who you will be your wife, is bigger than you can ever imagine. I mean, the Holy Spirit has conceived in her the very child that will save the whole world from their sins. You want to talk about afraid? Yeah, it's time to be afraid now. Before I was just going to be angry because I was a little bit embarrassed. Now, I'm responsible for that. I mean, one of the things we got to realize, now, I want you to personalize this church. Hear me. We have just been shown the method, the way, the process that God clearly moves and how the, our whole faith, our whole walk are built on the foundation of this miracle. Which means when the Holy Spirit births in you purpose, a dream, an idea, many times he will birth it in you when everything around you does not support what just happened. It would literally confuse you. It makes absolutely no sense. Why? Because it isn't just about you. It's about God displaying how he's going to work. Now, to take this even deeper, this goes from Christianity 101 to Christianity 201. People ask, why, you know, why did God have to do it this way? Because back in Genesis, when God says, let us make man in our image. Come on, this is the foundation now, right? When God established that in our image, in our likeness, which means we function like God. He then goes on to say in verse 26 in Genesis chapter 1, he goes, and let, let them have dominion over the earth. Everything I created, man will be the steward of. Man will manage. He even said, before I separated the waters and did all that stuff, I, I, some things I'm not doing until man shows up in order to create stewardship, management for what's going on. But through Adam and his mistakes, bad stewardship, bad management, 
the fall took place. But because God established it early on, come on, this is significant for believers now. Because God established early on that the order and how I function is I do everything through man. God is omnipresent. He's all powerful. He can't be limited except by what he limits himself to. And God made it clear that when I give a word, this is how the word of God works, through faith, this is how it works. When I speak a word, I put my own word, look at the book of Psalms now, I put my own word above my own name. Therefore, I cannot violate what I've already established. So us sitting around going, if God is so powerful, why do bad things happen to good people? If God is so powerful, why does stuff like that? Now, I'm not trying to make a mockery. I'm just saying, this is what happens when scriptural literacy is a problem. When we don't spend time getting the world. Have you not noticed that every single miracle God has ever done in this Bible was done through somebody? Why is that even necessary if he's God? He can just skip all people and just get to it. Never forget how the uncle my <laughs> uncle had issues, but he loved God. He was a preacher, but he was one of those, you know, you think I'm tough. Oh my God, my uncle used to, like, I don't understand why God says such stupid people. <laughs> okay. That was just how he would talk, you know what I mean? Okay. But what the point, not of my uncle's point, I got off on that. <laughs> okay. but, but the bigger point is simply this. Since that was the way that it was established, and because of Adam's mistake, God had to intervene. But the only way he could intervene without violating his own law was to come back through a man. So, this is why this scripture right here is one of the most powerful principal scriptures in the entire Bible. If this doesn't happen, we're all in trouble. Because it had to come back through a child, through a man. It's not just that Jesus, this baby was born, as it says in Isaiah, a son was given. A child is born, a son is given, as it says in Isaiah. What does that mean? A child, Jesus, the flesh, the body is born. But the son who always existed is given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The son already existed. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So when God was like, hey, devil, you think you won? No, I got a plan. It's just going to come in a way nobody ever anticipated. And had the devil just all shook up. So when the Holy Spirit tells Joseph, Joseph, don't be afraid. Now I get it. Because many times what God chooses to do in our lives is so incredible, it'll shake up everybody around you. So now, little coaching point. Not necessarily from a divorce standpoint, even though that's what he was threatening to do. Some of you are surrounded by people, connected people, and it might even be you, that the Holy Spirit has put something in you, a seed in you, that when conceived will disrupt everything. It seems like when that happens, God doesn't worry about interruptions. He don't worry about disruptions. He doesn't worry about inconvenience. He is going to do in you what he planned to do, as Anson was saying in worship. He who has started a good work in you is going to see it to completion. Right, amen. And that is going to happen in every one of us. Now, let's go a little further in this message. This is where it gets really good. So we know that Jesus is going to save his people from their sins. He's, going to say, he's taking care of our past. He's going to take care of our future. Our future is already established. Heaven is our home. Okay? Our sins in the past are taken care of. Isn't that awesome? But I don't know about the rest of y'all. I am so grateful for having a God who taken care of my past and a God who secured my future. But I can also use a God right now. Okay, I can also use a God who can be present with me right now. I want to know my God is with me, not just aware of me. Let's go a little deeper here. Look at the, verse number 22. 
And it says, all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Verse 23. And this was said in Isaiah, but this verse 20. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means, say it with me, God is with us. Again, God is with us. Man, when I first saw, I was like, oh my God, Jesus, your name, Jesus, took care of my path. Jesus died for me. Jesus had to come through. But Jesus Christ, the sovereign God, the God who is the great I am, is the one who's with me now. He's here. Now, you got to understand something. In the past, there was only one. God came through and he worked through Jesus. But because of Jesus' death and the sacrifice he's made, guess what now? It's not only is God with us, it's now God is in us. Okay, to make this practical, many times our mistake is just, I always say this, if the, it's kind of like math, this is why I struggle with math, because if I'm wrong early, you can't get right later. You know, it ain't like all the other classes, like essays, where I just write a whole bunch of stuff, at some point I hit the mark. But in math, if the calculus, if one little thing's off at the beginning, no matter how genius everything else is, it's still going to be off. Well, this is also what happens here. If your understanding is off, the Bible says in all you're getting, get understanding. I need to understand some things. Now, I'll get a little later. It doesn't mean I got to lean on it. It just means I need to get some. Okay. Now, here's what I mean by getting understanding. What we say about God is that we pray sometimes to make God as if God needs to be aware of us. We tell other people, hey, will you pray for me, to make God aware of me. We talk as if God is aware of us. Here's what you got to understand, and this is the pre-principle. It's not about God being aware of you. It's that God is with you. He's not oh, aware of you. That, that doesn't change. You. Oh, I'm glad I made God aware. My confidence is not in the fact that he's aware. You can be aware. You know, if you, some of us in the earth realm, we got parents who are aware of our predicament. But they're not eager to do something about it. I got friends who I know I'm aware of some challenge, but I haven't moved yet. But if I'm in that predicament with them, I might change some things. I never forget when my little girls, Taylor Madison, they were like one in five or, you know, real little. And they would come to my bedroom because in their bedroom were some monsters. And they would come in, Daddy, we got some monsters in the room. And I was like, okay, thank you for making me aware of that. Now go back to bed. <laughs> no. They had some monsters in their room. So I walked up, picked both of them up, carried them to the room. I didn't just lay in there, I laid down with my arms wrapped around. It wasn't even necessary for me to say, girls, look, there's no monsters. No. Because their peace was not going to come from them understanding there were no monsters. Their peace was a result of being in daddy's arms. Because no matter what the monster is, he ain't bigger than daddy. And so as long as daddy is here, I can rest. As long as daddy is with me, I can rest. Now, you may look at a story like that and say, well, fortunately, they got older, and then they come to understand there are no monsters. Man, every single one of us got monsters in our room right now. Some of you are nervous about going to work tomorrow. You at church trying to get going back to work tomorrow out of your mind. Knowing good and well, you're going to get back like, oh, Lord, look at the clock. It's almost time to go to bed to get up and go to that place. Because there is a monster in your mind. And so you will pray and say, God, I hope you're aware. God is like, I am aware, but more than that, I'm with you. 
If you realize I'm with you, you can go to the same place that scared you and actually sleep with perfect peace. When you grasp, when I said earlier, in all you're getting, get understanding, but just don't lean on it. I can learn and understand and seek truth all I want, but as long as I get to start off with trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. <laughs> you know why I got perfect peace? Because I don't depend on my understanding. Why? Because I don't got enough good information to depend on it. And neither do you. And if you think it looks ridiculous for, to allow a one and a five-year-old to imagine monsters, have you sat and thought about the stuff you're afraid of? How ridiculous is that? But we don't call it crazy. And neither does our God. Because he says, quit trying to make the stuff not be real. Just make me more real. What? Oh, man, what was that? One of my favorite shelves in the world. What was it? Baby girl, uh, Taylor, was it Veggie Tales? Yes. <laughs> Greatest song ever. This should be a hymn. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or monsters on TV. God is bigger than the boogeyman. And he's watching over you and me. The first time I heard that, I was like, oh, that's cute. Then I realized there's some boogeymans out there. Now, we call them different names. The boogeyman of fear walking to a hospital, swearing that I don't know if my family going to come out of here. I don't know if my mom, I don't know if my daughter. The boogeyman of I don't know how we're going to pay our rent. The boogeyman of I will never be, is my life stuck here? We got all monsters and boogeymans. And the reason we have that is we have confused God being aware and God with us. They're not the same thing. God with us is greater than God aware of us. And when you know that God is with you, Instead of just trying to inform of what's going on, you can trust that he already knows what's going on. Lord, I'm going to function. In re it says he will give you the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. Kind of to make any sense. Church, it's going to be the greatest holiday season you've ever had. Greatest Christmas season you ever had. Because now you really know the meaning of Christmas. Because when God himself came down <laughs> in the form of a baby named Jesus, this is why that song, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Think, think about the baby jumping in. Come on, humanize this now. Inside Mary's, Mary's stomach. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save all the sons and daughters? Mary, did you know when you kiss your baby's face that you're actually kissing the face of God? Ooh. Mary, did you know that you're heaven's perfect lamb, that baby boy, that's what he is, heaven's perfect lamb, and that your baby boy is the great I am. That's the reason for the season. Don't let the devil confuse you and things about deals and making a present for everybody and stressing out about stuff that don't matter. Because of Jesus and what he has done, taken care of our path, secured our future, but he's also Emmanuel. He's with us right now. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It don't say greater is he that is aware of me. <laughs> 